This is part 2 of the top 20 older woman and younger man relationships movies video. I highly recommend that you check out part 1 first if you haven't watched it yet. Let's start! Number 20. Tadpole Oscar is a 15-year-old boy, portrayed as mature beyond his years, traveling home from school for Thanksgiving. He speaks fluent French, quotes Voltaire, and finds girls of his own age to be too shallow and superficial. He falls in love with his stepmother, Eve. Oscar is sure that he can be a better partner for Eve than his work-obsessed father. When Eve's best friend responds to his advances, he suddenly finds himself in way over his head. Number 19. My Mistress My Mistress is a 2014 Australian film. A 16-year-old boy discovers his father's suicide. Distraught, he goes searching for ways to numb the pain. He then meets the beautiful French stranger. She's a professional, and she specializes in pain. So Charlie falls in love, and despite herself, so does she. Drawn to this troubled boy who takes all the pain she can give and uses it to heal himself. And as Charlie heals, he turns that healing back onto her, his mistress. Number 18. A Teacher The life of a female high school teacher's illicit affair with the male student that turns from infatuation into obsession. This relationship is the most fulfilling she's had in quite some time. A few incidents, and the first real close call on being caught, leads her to calling off the affair several months in, as she finally comes to the understanding that being caught would most certainly mean the end of her teaching career and her good reputation. For the TV adaption, see A Teacher 2020, a miniseries on Hulu. Number 17. Flying Blind A stylish mix of erotic love and political thriller. Helen McCrory stars as a brilliant aerospace engineer who is drawn into a passionate affair with a younger male student while working on a government contract for an aircraft destined for military use. She finds that she has crossed a line into a nightmare world of suspicion and accusation. Realizing how little she knows of this man, Frankie determines to find out the truth, only to discover to her cost that betrayal always comes from those closest to us. McCrory plays Frankie dangerously. It's acting of the highest order thrilling to watch. Number 16. Brief Crossing A young Frenchman with aspirations of becoming a plastic surgeon and an older, recently divorced Englishwoman spend one night together on a ship. The movie explores the viewpoints of two people at different stages in their lives and their attitudes towards intimacy and relationships. Number 15. The Maid An emotionally troubled teenager leaves the U.S. for England to spend some time with his estranged father, hoping to salvage their fragile relationship. Arriving at his dad's home, Maria, the elegant and mysterious older foreign woman who lurks there, is introduced to him. She becomes emotionally attached to him when she hears of Jack's troubled life, and his life story reminds her of her own troubled past. Jack also finds himself attracted to Maria emotionally, and his desire for her pushes him to take steps to turn their friendship into a relationship that will change both of their lives. Number 14. Film stars don't die in Liverpool. Hollywood actress Gloria Graham finds romance and happiness with a younger man. As their mismatched romance waxes and wanes over time, even when it proves to be complicated and challenging, events conspire to hold them in each other's lives. Ultimately, they find that, wherever they are together or apart, they must each come to terms with whatever fate they face in the future. It is based on the memoir of the same name by Peter Turner, which tells of his relationship with Academy Award-winning American actress Goya Graham in the 1970s Liverpool, and, some years later, her death from stomach cancer. Number 13. The Good Girl The Good Girl is an American black comedy drama film starring Jennifer Aniston, Jake Gyllenhaal, and John C. Riley. Justine Last is married and loved by her husband, and yet she's not a happy woman. Her life has settled into a dreary routine, and her lazy husband spends more time smoking joints with his best friend Bubba than trying to father a child. 
It is then that she meets Holden Warther, an attractive young man who considers himself the incarnation of Holden Caulfield, and seems to know the same existential anxieties as her, and in whom she believes to recognize her soulmate. Thanks to him, she will relearn how to live intensely until the day when this relationship will become obsessive. The Good Girl was well received by most critics. As of July 2020, Review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes reports a 82% approval rating. The site's consensus states that, a dark dramedy with exceptional performances from Jennifer Aniston and Jake Gyllenhaal, The Good Girl is a moving and astute look at the passions of two troubled souls in a small town. Number 12, Heading South. Heading South is a French-Canadian Belgian drama film based on three short stories by Denis Laferriere. Three older women feel lonely and ignored by middle-aged men back at home. They travel to Haiti to enjoy a solid day of sun, surf, and fun with attractive local teenagers to whom they are financially generous. But when Brenda begins to develop feelings for Gigolo Legba, the sudden appearance of honest emotion throws the trio into turmoil. Number 11. Scarborough. Scarborough is a British drama film written and directed by Barnaby Southcombe, set in the town of Scarborough, England. The story follows two different couples, each comprising of a teacher and a student. Spend a life-changing weekend at the seaside resort town of Scarborough to seek an escape from the constraints of everyday life. The dynamics of the teacher-pupil relationship is put to the test over two weeks in Scarborough. Whilst it seems that the couples are aware of each other's presence, they do not interact with each other. Number 10. Hallam Foe. Hallam Foe is a British drama film based on the novel written by Peter Jinks. The 17-year-old Hallam Foe is a weird teenager that misses his mother, who committed suicide. Hallam lives in the Scottish countryside with his father and stepmother. His hobby is spying on people from his treehouse. Hallam is convinced that his stepmother, Verdi, is responsible for his mother's death by drowning two years earlier. But she uses him first to sleep with her, and then to blackmail him into leaving. To escape his father and stepmother, Hallam travels to Edinburgh. He sees Kate Breck and becomes obsessed with her because of her resemblance to his mother. Kate hires Hallam to work in the kitchen of the hotel where she works, and they have a strange romance, while Hallam reaches his maturity in the hardest way. Number 9. When Love Digs a Hole Miron, a young delinquent man, played by Robert Naylor, leads a party life in the 1990s Montreal and fails in school. His parents, both university professors, forced their son to follow them to the countryside in the hope that their son could catch up on school and thus finish high school. Meanwhile, Miron is bored, until the day he meets Florence, a 73-year-old neighbor who celebrates the first anniversary of the death of her husband. Together, they can confide, philosophize about life, and have fun, until the day an ideal develops which quickly upsets those around them. When Love Digs a Hole is a Quebec black comedy film written and directed by Canadian actor Ara Ball. The film's young character does share some superficial traits with Ball's younger days. He says the film is a tribute to his own grandmother, Margaret Ball, as he was so close to her. The film also has some reference points to Hal Ashby's film Harold and Maude that his grandmother introduced to him when Ball was just 12. Number 8. The Violin Player the Violin Player is a Finnish film about love, passion, ambition, and music. 45-year-old Karen is a leading violinist who loses the sensitivity in her fingers after a traffic incident. She goes back into teaching and falls in love with her almost 20 years younger student, Antti. The Violin Player is a guilty pleasure of the highest order, disguised as a prestige art house film. Finnish playwright Bavo Westernberg makes his directional debut with this tale of musical obsession. Number 7. No Thanks No Thanks is a Finnish comedy film based on Annalena Herkunen's novel of the same name, published in 2008. Heli is 42, an art teacher, and still in love with her husband. But her husband shows no real intimacy in her, and prefers his computer. After many years of marriage, a shoulder massage is the highest form of intimacy from him. The relationship hits serious trouble when the couple's 13-year-old daughter leaves for a month-long summer holiday in London. Whatever she undertakes to seduce him is useless. She begins an affair with the feisty young student, Jarno. But not everything goes according to plan. No Thanks was the most watched film in Finland on its premiere weekend. Number 6. Hounded 
a German intense drama film by director Angelina Macaron about a sadomasochistic and obsessive relationship between a 50-year-old probation officer and her 16-year-old client. The successful probation officer, Elsa, lives with Reimar, the father of their daughter, Daniela, and is completely absorbed in her work. After her daughter moved out, Elsa began to have doubts about her life and years of action. When her new client, a 16-year-old offender who frankly offers to submit himself sexually to her. Although being shocked in the beginning, she quickly recognizes the attraction that female dominance exerts on her. Elsa dares to accept Jan's offer. While the two implement their longings and only relate to each other more and more intensely, Elsa's life derails more and more. The black and white film won the Golden Leopard at the 59th Locarno International Film Festival. Number 5. Laguna. Laguna is a French-Italian-Canadian film. Young Thomas sees his parents die in an attack orchestrated by the Mafia. He is taken in by Joe, a family friend who raises him as his son. Thomas, now an adult, is sent to live in Italy. There, while his tortured past and death of his parents come back to haunt him, he feels increasingly drawn to Thelma, his uncle's mysterious wife. Soon, Thomas will learn the truth about the death of his parents and foment a vengeance of great heights. This is a beautiful romance more than a thriller, with the relationship between Thomas and Thelma at the center of the story. Number 4. Water for Elephants Based on Sarah Gruen's 2006 novel of the same name. Sent in the 1930s, a former veterinary student takes a job in a traveling circus and falls in love with the ringmaster's wife. After the death of his parents, Jacob is left penniless and homeless. Events lead him to join a traveling circus as a vet. Their boss has a violent streak that keeps everyone at bay, including his wife, Marlena. Jacob soon falls in love with Marlena. Number 3. P.S. Based on a Helen Shulman's 2001 novel, 39-year-old divorcee Louise Harrington works on the admissions office at Columbia University School of Arts. She is intelligent, pretty, and successful, yet unfulfilled. That is, until a graduate school application crosses her desk and she arranges to interview the young painter. When the painter appears, he bears an uncanny resemblance to Louise's high school sweetheart who was killed in a car crash. His appearance, mannerisms, and painting style closely resemble those of her former love, and she begins to suspect the young artist may be the incarceration of her old flame. Hours after meeting, the two embark upon an affair. But is Scott just a reminder of Luis's lost love? And is Scott just trying to wheedle his way into the Ivy League? Number 2. Strayed the film is an adaption of Guillaume Perrault's novel, The Boy with Grey Eyes. The plot follows a widowed mother, who escaping occupied Paris with her two young children during World War II, finds shelter with an itinerant teenager and an abandoned royal house. A powerfully suspenseful film about how war tears lives apart, nearly destroys them, and then, amazingly, forces them to survive together. Nominated for the Palme d'Or at 2003's Festival de Cannes, Number 1. Birth When Anna's husband Sean dies, she moves ahead with her life and gets engaged to Joseph. Things take a turn when she meets a young boy who claims to be a reincarnation of Sean. Though his story is both unsettling and absurd, Anna can't get the boy out of her mind, and much to the concern of her fiancé, she becomes convinced that her deceased husband, Sean, has been reincarnated as the ten-year-old boy. Her increased contact with him leads her to question the choices she has made in her life. The film has undergone a critical reappraisal, and has been praised for its performance and cinematography. 